Greetings and welcome to another stock investment analysis video. Today we'll be doing something a little different with an examination of a company which is not yet public. This is a company with a great deal of potential reward as well as risk. The company is Hylion and in this video I will break down the pros and cons of investing in this company, I will give you my plans for whether I will invest, and I'll explain why I believe this company is a better investment than Nikola. First, please like the video because I spent a great deal of time creating these and would love to get the video out to more people who are interested. Also, please subscribe so you never miss a future video. Now, why is Hylion being hyped? It is because Tortoise Acquisition Corporation, ticker symbol SHLL, will be combining with Hylion through a merger which will result in a new ticker symbol HYLN. Tortoise is contributing over $235 million in cash held in a trust to propel Hylion forward. Combining this with around $325 million from a sale of discounted shares, Hylion will have around $520 million to fund growth and this should cover all their needs prior to commercialization and production. It currently has a $1.1 billion enterprise which we can compare to that $1.5 billion market cap. There's two major problems Hylion intends to solve. The first is the CO2 emissions created by the trucking industry. Transportation generates 29% of greenhouse gases. Only 335 of their trucks are needed to eliminate 1 million metric tons of CO2. Now that's only 1 million of the 36.6 billion tons emitted globally, but every bit helps. Given 96% of countries remain committed to the Paris Agreement and 86% of companies and 81% of consumers are focused on environmental and sustainability issues, there is a large market for this. Hylion's second goal is to reduce cost of ownership and save money for truckers or trucking companies. Given an $800 billion market opportunity, there is some potential here. The first of which is a hybrid electric truck and the second is an electric hyper truck, the electricity of which is powered by natural gas. You might be thinking that this makes it a natural gas vehicle, not an electric vehicle, but it remains an electric truck the same way Teslas are electric regardless of what power source generated the electricity. Here we see the first reason I believe Hylion is a better investment than Nikola. Hylion already has their hybrid electric system installed in over 30,000 trucks with over 2 million miles driven. Their hybrid truck will be ready for customer trials next year. Nikola does not have early deployments nor will they in the near future. Hylion is well ahead and will beat Nikola to market by years. This leads me to another reason Hylion is better. It more easily replaces what is currently available. Current diesel trucks total 7 year cost of ownership is $431,850. Hylion's electric system will cost the consumer initially as you can see it is around $25,000 more than diesel up front, but over time it will cost almost $60,000 less than fuel. That's 6% total savings or around $27,000 less. Now we may want to be eco-friendly, but we also have to be practical. Not many people are going to buy a truck that will cost them $637,500 no matter how much they love the environment, especially when they can buy a truck that is over $200,000 less like the diesel. Compare the fuel cost between Hylion's $95,000 over 7 years and Nikola's massive $350,000. Also note that the payload capabilities of Hylion's hypertruck far outpace Tesla. They are projecting a total 7 year ownership cost that is almost $358,000 less than Nikola and over $158,000 less than Tesla. Businesses are intended to make money. Companies will be reluctant to spend hundreds of thousands of extra dollars on Nikola when they can get an electric or hybrid from Hylion for far cheaper and even sooner. Take a look at the top. Tesla's truck will be ready by 2021 or later. Nikola will be ready by 2023 or later. Hylion's hybrid is already available and their hyper truck will be ready next year. Looking at this timeline for the hyper truck, the demo truck testing is nearly done now. The fleet demo rollout and commercialization and launch is expected sometime in 2021 and volume production will be taking place throughout 2022, well before Nikola trucks can hit the market. Here's another reason why the Hylion system is better. Looking at fuel prices, the cost for an equivalent gallon of diesel would cost almost $12 for hydrogen and over $7 for electricity. RCNG stands for Renewable Compressed Natural Gas. This would cost only around $1. Even if prices of hydrogen and electricity come down in the future, it is unlikely that they will come down as low as compressed natural gas anytime soon. Now what sorts of infrastructure exists to fuel these trucks? For hydrogen, there are less than 10 stations in North America. There's also less than 10 electric fueling stations. Compare that to the 729 natural gas stations. There's far more elsewhere in the world with over 5,000 in Europe and over 20,000 in Asia, showing a huge amount of infrastructure already in place for these trucks. In order to just catch up to the 729 stations already in place, it would cost around $12 billion for hydrogen and $7 billion for electricity. That's a huge amount of time and money placing Hylion ahead once more. Although hydrogen and electricity are cleaner than gasoline, they still have higher fuel carbon scores than natural gas, with natural gas being the only one with potential for being carbon negative. This is again a win for Hylion if we are truly concerned with carbon emissions. Not only that, Hylion trucks have a larger range and higher payload capacity. 
The refuel time is equal to Nikola and better than Tesla by a large margin. Their performance is equal to Tesla and superior to Nikola. Hylian has advanced battery solutions which should allow for up to 30,000 charge cycles reliably. The beauty of their hybrid electric system is it can be used with any truck. It does not require customers to buy a new truck. Anyone's truck can be retrofitted with the technology from Hylion, and they have already done so with many trucking companies on a range of different trucks. Take a look how the natural gas and electric processes take place for the hypertruck. In step 1, we see the natural gas generator. The generator then charges the batteries in step 2. For step 3, the batteries power the e-motor. Last, for step 4, the e-motor drives the rear axles and provides regenerative braking. For hilly terrain, this will be particularly important for efficiency and cost savings. When fully loaded at 80,000 pounds, the hypertruck can still travel over 1,300 miles, charging its batteries en route, and can be refueled in 10 minutes or less. Impressively, it is lighter than any diesel or fully electric Class 8. Now let's get into the numbers. My data is limited here compared to most of my videos because Hylion is not yet a publicly traded company available on my research tools. It is a relatively young company and does not have the track record most of the companies I invest in have. Here you can see the share price was set to be $10 and there are 161.6 million shares outstanding. This would mean $1.6 billion in equity value for a company with an enterprise value of almost $1.1 billion. Let's look at the growth of their financials. Before we get into this, please look at the letter E next to each year. E stands for estimated. In other words, this has not yet happened. This is what is estimated based on their current sales, contracts, and the information they have available to them. You can see that they expect extremely rapid growth of their already available electric units from 20 to 300 to 4100 to 8000 and then 15500 by 2024. They expect sales of their hypertruck by 2022, beginning with 2500 in a year and quickly growing to 19000 by 2024. Revenue is expected to grow from 1 million in 2022 to over 2 billion in 2024. Please note that the revenue, profit, and EBITDA numbers here are in millions. Unlike some of the other recent IPOs, Hylion should be seeing profitability by next year, with a $2 million profit in 2021, which may grow to over $730 million by 2024. That would mean that they would become profitable far more quickly than Nikola or Tesla. They see a great 35.3% profit margin by that point, which could likely continue to grow and improve. EBITDA, or earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, is expected to grow from $56 million this year to over $600 million by 2024 with a nice growing EBITDA margin. Hylion sees the intrinsic value of their company as well above the transaction value of their shares. Now, as you might recall from the last slide, they expect EBITDA of around $602 million by 2024. Because the markets are future looking, they argue that for the $1.1 billion enterprise price you can buy at the IPO, that $1.1 billion enterprise value is only 1.8 times the 2024 EBITDA. They note that by 2024, a more reasonable price to EBITDA would be 7 to 9 times price to EBITDA, which would give an enterprise value of about $2.4 to $3.1 billion. With a 25% margin of error, we might guess it will be between $2.1 billion and $3.5 billion. If we take the midpoint, we get $2.8 billion, which is just over 2.5 times the $1.1 billion value. If price rose to match EBITDA, we might then expect 150% returns by 2024, which would be around a 26.31% compound annual growth rate. Now this is all purely speculative. This assumes that price to EBITDA does grow to 8 times by 2024 and that EBITDA does grow to $602 million by that time. Although as the saying goes, we should never make predictions, especially about the future, that is the nature of investing and this gives us a guideline to consider. Hylion expects their growth in revenue and EBITDA to improve their enterprise value to EBITDA and enterprise value to revenue ratios by 2024, but are forecasting poor ratios for their rival Nikola. While this might be self-serving, it also appears quite likely given the available data. For those who are worried about upfront costs of Hylion's technology, please bear in mind that many states like California offer significant tax credits to companies who buy vehicles or systems like this. So to conclude, the Hylion case is it is the lowest total cost of ownership of any truck, it is the only net carbon negative emitting truck, already has the infrastructure for refueling, is compatible with any class 8 truck from any manufacturer, and there is no additional capital required to get to volume production which means protection from unnecessary debt or share dilution. A major complication of buying as a long term buy and hold investment is the hype factor. When the merger was announced, the stock price of SHLL shot up 79% and then declined about 5%. It's possible this could turn into an overhyped FOMO situation like Nikola, which shot up over 600% within a brief period based on news of investments and in going public. It dropped in price by over 24% after hitting the peak, but has been increasing in share price since. I actually see more value and practicality in a Highland investment. Here's my conservative take. I see it as a better investment at $10 than its current $17. 
Remember, their estimate of a 150% share price increase by 2024 would put that share price around $25, and we're already at over $17. So is that gain from $17 to $25 by 2024 worth it? Now here's a more optimistic method of valuation. Nikola expects to make $3.2 billion in revenue in 2024. Given Nikola's share price at the time I'm making this video, this means Nikola is trading around 7.5 times its estimated 2024 revenues. If we assume Hylian will be valued similarly to Nikola, and we were to value Hylian with the same metric, 7.5 times estimated 2024 revenues, then the company should trade at around a $16 billion market cap in 2024. With 161.6 million shares outstanding of Hylion stock, that would give a value of roughly $100 per share, which is a 54.83% compound annual growth rate. Now again, this is based on many assumptions, but it is an interesting exercise to consider. Buying an IPO is counter to my typical investment strategy. I generally buy companies with a long track record, sustainable profits, and growing dividends. However, I have a small portion of a growth portfolio I've reserved for a few more speculative investments. While I will keep this small, I see Hylion as having a great deal of potential not just as a way to make money, but also a company with a useful and practical product. I see it as more investable for me now than Nikola. While I would like to see share price decline, I'm expecting a dollar cost average into a small position. What are your thoughts on Hylion? Is it a buy? Is it overvalued? Is it a better investment than Nikola? Please let me know in the comments below. I look forward to hearing from you. Remember to subscribe because I am creating new videos for you every week. And as always, good luck with your investing.